Well today I'm coming to you live from the chicken coop where we're going to discuss a little bit about nest boxes and, uh, and broody hens. <coughs> We've done a little series or mini series on working with broody hens but this is a great time of year given that we're well into spring to talk about a few of the finer details of that I suppose. So here's the main topic of discussion, nest boxes. So as you can see we have two nest boxes here that are in one of our uh, breeder coops and uh, one of the things about nest boxes is you do need, especially when you're using broody hens, you do need some bedding. We've experimented with a lot of different types of bedding. We like the shavings the best because uh, they tend to be a little bit absorbent which is not a bad thing and uh, for chickens at least they have less of a tendency to kick them out but when you have normal regular traffic coming and going from the nest boxes sometimes they still kick some out and occasionally eggs get broken <laughs> so what I'm actually doing today and you can see I've already done it to this one I've taken the eggs out nobody's broody right now yet although we're getting pretty close to a critical mass where uh, somebody probably should go broody but in this box I've already taken the eggs all out and added basically more bedding to the nest. And this box, I'm going to do the same thing here in a moment so that I can maintain that uh, cushion under the eggs. Well, through the magic of technology, you got to watch me uh, do what's essentially a minute or two job in uh, like half the time. <laughs> Basically what I did there is you can move the eggs at this point because nobody's sitting. And I guess the take home message here is working with broody hens is great because they will do 90 to 98 percent of the work for you. But it doesn't mean that it's completely management free. Unfortunately, for us where we live, we don't live in an environment that's conducive for chickens to really do their thing completely on their own. We keep them in coops for various reasons, so you are equating to a natural environment, but it's not perfect. So you do have to give them a bit of a helping hand, and uh, when you're trying to encourage broodiness, you do want to keep an eye on the nest box, inspect it daily, and if it looks like the bed in there is getting down, or if it looks like there's something worse going on, i.e. eggs are disappearing, then you're going to have to intervene and do a little bit of uh, management on their behalf. But it's not hard work. A little hard to see here, but uh, another thing I did at this time, to, took, the, took the time to do, I suppose, was equal out the eggs. So what we're aiming for here, and it doesn't always work, but when we can get it to happen, we would love for two hens of this group, which we know we definitely have some broody girls that have gone broody in the past in here, we would absolutely love for two of them to go broody at or very close to the same time. So even though we tend to get one nest box favored over the other, a daily thing that we'll do is we'll count the eggs, and there's a few reasons for that, but one of them is just to, to even them out. So if they're laying a bit more in box number one, over here, and less than that one, all you have to do is move eggs from this box to that one. And uh, there's a pretty good chance once somebody decides that they have accumulated to the point that it's worth sitting on, that uh, somebody else will very quickly follow suit. Well, there you go. That's uh, as complicated as it gets right now. If everything goes sort of according to plan and your birds want to cooperate with you, you uh, will end up with some broody hens. So we'll go and uh, show you what we've already got going on the uh, broody hen department here uh, momentarily because uh, as we're getting to the end of April, we've already had a few that have decided to uh, sit for us. So here is the first hen that uh, decided to go broody for us. So she's from our green group and uh, she's the lucky one because she got luxury accommodations because she was number one. And uh, we didn't have a space in the barn for a normal sort of maternity ward. So she got a pen to herself. Now in an ideal situation, I would love to uh, construct more of these. Or something similar. Figure out a, a decent floor space area 
for uh, broody hens to just make everybody's life easier. But uh, we're not quite there yet, so we'll uh, go and show you kind of our more typical maternity ward for this time of year. Now this hen should be hatching sometime in the next week, uh, we figure. So we'll uh, see how it goes. Well, it's a little dark and doesn't look like much of anything, but here is one of our little maternity cages, really they're cages, that we tend to use for one hen. So we are up to three hens that have gone broody. Two from the green group and one from our orange group, which is pretty awesome. We have a bit more of an in-depth video on this, we'll link that above, but they're very, very simple because essentially why the birds are broody, they don't do much. You do need to give them food and water, obviously, but uh, they only come out for a very brief bit. Eat, drink, go to the bathroom, and they're usually back in pretty shortly after. So uh, the one thing is, if you're doing this kind of setup, make sure it's somewhere where they're not going to get disturbed too much. We have this in the barn in a stall, which uh, is kind of tucked out of the way, so they're uh, pretty quiet in here. Probably comes as absolutely no surprise that in our opinion, working with broody hens, uh, whether they be chickens or other fowl, is definitely something we think is on the road to sustainability or uh, potentially closing loops on uh, at least one aspect of raising poultry, especially on a small scale. Obviously what we've kind of shown you and the time it takes to uh, do the things that uh, are required, even though it's not a lot of time, when you start multiplying that by more and more birds, you can see the dilemma. But on a small scale, right now we have four breeding groups of chickens. If we have two from each of those go broody, that's eight hens. Somewhere in eight to ten hens will definitely produce you more than enough chicks to replenish your flock and also uh, be able to eat chicken. So uh, definitely something to think, think about. Sometimes less is more. But uh, anyways, we'll be uh, waiting the customary 21 days to see uh, what we get for chicks.